Tack. This one. There we go. Um, now it's on. All right, this is our first attempt at doing a live lecture on my computer. So let's see how this goes. This person here is Alice. She's very nice and is going to get lectured too. You let me know if I don't make any sense or if you have any questions. I'll definitely let you know if you don't make sense. Also, if you're crazy. You're mostly crazy. I'm going to have to edit out most of what you say, I think. <laughs> All right, the first part. Um, the first unit is uh, kind of reviewing most of what we did last year. Oh, so if you found if you can um, edit them while you're still recording this <laughs> Um No, I have not. This might be the time to find out if you want to edit this stuff. Yeah, like said someone keeps interrupting the screencast. Interrupt, interrupt, interrupt. Um, all right, you're using up all my precious time. Uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. Worse than my students. We're not bad. Ah, uh, no proof. Um, all right, so this first part is the calculation stuff. Um, number one, we've got measurements. You should remember the um, uh, Système International, all of the SI units for things. You've got kilograms for mass, meters for length, seconds for time, kelvins for temperature. Um, we didn't hit current much last year, but we actually will this year later on. Um, that comes in amperes. Um, and amount of substance is in moles. Uh, volume is the other one, which comes in liters. The thing to remember about volume is that there's a thousand mils in a liter, and that's the same thing as a thousand centimeters cubed. So you have to remember that a centimeter cubed is the same as a milliliter. So if you ever have an actual cube and you measure it with a ruler, you can figure out its um, liquid volume by switching from centimeters cubed to mils. Um, the other part of the SI system is the metric prefixes, um, which you guys memorized from Terra to Femto, but apparently Femto doesn't come up with AP, it only goes down to Nano. Um, so it is these numbers here, 12, 9, 6, 3, 2, 1, etc. Those are the exponents on the 1 times 10 to the hmm of it. So. Um, for example, a millimeter is 1 times 10 to the negative 3 me meters. A nanometer is 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, it is helpful to be familiar with the exponents that go with these dudes because then you can just um, convert by remembering that, for example, milli is 6 decimal places off of nano and moving your exponent six places instead of having to go swoop, 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 swoop. Um, saves a little bit of time. Um, density is a derived unit um, kind of calculation that you should remember. Density equals mass divided by volume. Um, the units for mass uh, are supposed to be kilograms, but typically your units for density come out in grams per mil or grams per centimeter cubed, those being equivalent. Um, so we will do a couple of density problems in a second. And temperature, we are also going to do a couple of temperature problems in a second. Um, the thing to remember is that between Kelvin and Celsius, um, the degrees are the same size, but the um, zero points are at different spots. So for Kelvin, the zero point is at absolute zero, which is the absolute coldest that you can possibly get. That's where all of the energy is gone. There is no more little wiggles in the atoms and things. Um, and that is equivalent to negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. The 0.15, I don't know. Do you need that? Only if you have that many sig figs in your problem, I suppose. Um, and so that's how you convert back and forth between Kelvin and Celsius as you add or subtract 273.15 degrees. Um, the thing about Celsius to Fahrenheit is that not only are the zero points different, but the degrees are different size. Um, in fact, they are nine-fifths uh, sized compared to one another. So in 100 degrees of Celsius, there are 180 degrees of Fahrenheit, um, which means that the Fahrenheit ones are smaller. Um, and they're 32 degrees off, 
Um, so your formula for that is if you've got Celsius and you want to get to Fahrenheit, um, you've got to go 9 fifths times your Celsius and then add 32. So that is all of our measurement stuff. Now for um, sig fig type stuff. Um, when you measure stuff, you have to measure to a specific decimal point, um, to a specific place in the number. So if you had a graduated cylinder and you were trying to measure how much volume of water it had, you could pour in some water and have 20.15 milliliters. And what you've done there is you are saying, I am sure that it's 20 mils because I can see on the marks on the graduated cylinder that it's 20. And I can also see that I am sure that it's 0.1 because the, the tenths places are also marked on the glass, like it's got a line there. But actually the, the water line is between the one and the two of the tenths. And so, well, it's not exactly 0.1, it's not exactly 0.2, it's, it's kind of right there in the middle, you estimate by looking at it. So you go and you record 20.15, even though the 15 is not a mark on the glass, um, that's, that 5 is a significant digit, although it is called the uncertain digit. The last digit in a measurement is always the uncertain digit, because it's the one that you estimated with your eye in between the, um, the marks, or it's the one on the balance that's last um, that always wiggles up and down. And you're like, wait, no, it's a 7. No, it's an 8. No, it's a 7. No, it's an eight. Um, so, um, and then the other thing about reading uh, graduated cylinders is that you have to read at the bottom of the menis meniscus. That's this little swoopy guy, swoop. Um, and the reason that you read at the bottom of it is because this little triangle of volume here on either side is negligible, um, and it's better to read at the bottom. Um, as far as um, sometimes you get screwy scales um, or screwy measuring devices. Um, if you have a measuring device that is always correct, the measurements that it gives are right, it is called accurate. So it's right on the money. You can have a scale that has something called a systematic error where you know, you're measuring a bunch of things that weigh five grams, but it keeps going six grams, six grams, six grams, six grams. And you're like, no, look, these are five gram weights. Um, that's a systematic error of plus one gram, um, but it's repeatable. So the scale is precise. It's saying the same thing every time, but it's not correct. Um, you can have also a really screwy scale um, that is imprecise where you're weighing those same five gram weights and it's going six grams, four grams, two grams, eight grams. Um, and that guy is all over the place and he's pretty worthless. Um, you can correct for a precise um, systematic error, but an imprecise um, crazy error like that, you're kind of like, eh, there's not much we can do about that. All right, so that's those guys. Sig figs. Um, the thing about sig figs is that on the AP exam, you have to get them right. Also, the web assign homework, especially the web assign homework. They're real anal about it. Um, so for sig figs, you have to know what they are and know how to use them in calculations. Um, the AP exam will give you one sig fig of leeway. So if, you're, if your answer is supposed to have three sig figs in it, you are allowed to put in two or four, but if you put in five, they will scowl and, take, and ding you a point. Um, so you have to watch out for that. Um, frankly, I think they're too generous. Um, sig figs that, numbers that are actually significant digits include one through nine. Those are always significant because you measured them. Um, there are some different types of zeros. You've got captive zeros. So if you've got 1.01, .01, that zero is trapped between two real numbers. So he is significant. Um, even if you have 1.00000001, all of those zeros are significant because um, they are captive. Um, trailing zeros post decimal. So 1.00. Those zeros are significant because no person is going to measure an inch and then write 1.00 inches. 
if you actually wrote those zeros, it means you're saying, hey, I measured the tenths place and I measured the hundredths place, okay? And they were both zero. Um, and uh, another thing to remember is that things that you have counted, like how many students are in the class, there are eight students. You don't have like 0.2 students, it doesn't happen. So if it's a counting number, that has an infinite number of sig figs, so that does not limit your calculations to one significant figure if you're using the number eight students. Um, it's some, it's whatever else the significant figures are that apply there. So some zeros that are not significant include leading zeros, so 0 0.01. Those two zeros don't count. They're in front and they're only there to indicate um, the location of that one. Um, so, you know, you could have 0 0.00000001 and it's still only one significant digit, that one right there. The zeros in front do not count. Um, and then trailing zeros, no decimal. Those are not significant figures. Um, for example, in 500, those two zeros are not significant because that kind of number is the kind of number you get when someone is estimating. Um, so somebody will say, oh man, there were totally 500 people at the party last night. That was a big party. Um, and you're not really persuaded that they counted the people at the party <laughs> to the ones place. They probably kind of looked around and were like, man, so many people. Instead of counting, oh wow, there actually are 500 people here. Um, which reminds me of the time last year when we counted black beans and uh, we actually counted every single black bean that I randomly poured out into this cup and it took us like 20 straight minutes with everyone counting, um, which was thrilling. Um, and we got 3,000 black beans. Exactly. And I thought that was hilarious because it's a perfect example of significant figures because if I had told somebody else, hey, today I poured out some black beans and there were 3,000, they would not actually have thought that I sat there and counted all 3,000 black beans because that would be crazy. Um, I made my slaves do it. Um, but it was interesting because, you know, if you really want to convince somebody that that's what you're doing, um, no, that's not the one I want. Um, you have to write it in scientific notation because if you, where's my little pen? Come back. If you wrote the number 3000, the only significant digit is this three. Um, but we actually counted all four of these. We counted the hundreds place, the tens place, and the ones place. So we've got to convert that to scientific notation. Here's 3.000 e to the third. Now these zeros are after a decimal, so they count. Um, so now you've got the four significant digits that you did actually count um, showing up in that kind of number. So um, that's how you do that. And now go back to, is it notes? Yes. All right, so those are the things that are significant digits. Um, in order to calculate significant digits, you have to remember that when you're multiplying or dividing, you use the fewest significant digits. But if you're adding or subtracting, you use the fewest significant digits of the decimal places. So let me give you an example of that. So if you had, if you had, for example, um, third, no, come on, pen. If you had um, 32 grams times 154.1 grams. Um, I'll type that into my little calculator. And that gives me 4,931.2 grams squared. It's a sad unit. Um, that's too many sig figs in the answer because this is one, two, three, four sig figs. This is only two sig figs. The fewest of those is two, which means that our answer has to be rounded to two significant um, digits, which will give us the answer, Alice. 4.9 e to the 
Um, yes, if you did that in scientific notation. Four point, put that back. 4.9e to the 3. Um, it's not necessary to write it that way because 4900. This has got one, two significant digits, and this has got one, two significant digits, and then these are not significant. And that's what we were going for. Um, and then we have retarded unit again. Um, so that's how you do a multiplication or a division problem. Um, if you wanted to do an addition problem, and now my pen is gone again. Why did they do that to me? Um, <clears throat> if you wanted to, for example, add 32.85 grams plus um, 526 point... Oh, I don't want 526. I want 5,267, let's say. Point one grams. I add those together. Are you using your calculator? Yes. Um, that gives me the answer five two nine nine point ninety five grams. However, um, the sig figs on this answer are not correct. You're supposed to round to um, the decimal places that were the fewest which here we've got one decimal place versus two decimal places. So we need to round to one decimal place. Uh-oh. Oh, I put too many nines in there, didn't I? <laughs> this is going to be evil. <laughs> All right. So what's interesting is that we have to round to this place, which you look over, and that's a five, so it goes up. So it goes up to a zero and rounds this guy up. Well, that's a nine. <laughs> So that rounds that up to a zero, which rounds that guy up, which rounds him up to a zero, which rounds this guy up. So this is 53, hey, um, 5300.0 grams. And now our sig figs are correct. Um, and it was a coincidence that I gave you a mean one. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so that's got five sig figs in it, but what really matters is the number of sig figs in the decimal places because we are doing addition and subtraction in this case. All right, now back to the notes. All right, dimensional analysis. We did this a ton during the stoichiometry unit, um, and hopefully you remember how to do it because we're kind of starting off assuming that you do. Um, if you need to convert, stop it. If you need to convert units, um, you use dimensional analysis, and so for example, if you were doing a miles per hour into kilometers per minute, um, you're going to need to convert miles into kilometers and hours into minutes. The way that you do that is you need to make sure that your... I want the pen. Give me the pen. There we go. You need to make sure that your... Um, units cancel. So we start off with 55 miles over one hour. The miles need to cancel and turn into um, kilometers. It means that you have got to have a distance metric to English um, unit memorized, at least one. The one that I happen to know here, I've used this equality, one meter is equal to 1.094 yards. You can pick any one. You can learn the miles to kilometers. You can le learn the meters to yards. You can use the inches to centimeters, which I think is the one that I actually have memorized, 2.54 centimeters in an inch. Um, but you need at least one because otherwise you get stuck. And you're like, I can't get there. So you've got to cancel the miles. So you bring down the miles um, and get to yards. So you bring down the yards, so these miles cancel out and the yards cancel out, leaving you with meters. Um, but we need kilometers, so we bring down the meters, we cancel out the meters and give us one kilometer. Um, so now our top is correct, which is great. Now we need to do our bottom. Um, and here you've got an hour and we need to convert it to minutes. So hour needs to cancel up. Boop, boop. So that's canceling him, and there are 60 minutes and an hour. So now our bottom is correct. Because our top unit and our bottom unit are correct, 
we now know that we are done, and now we can just do the mathy part, which is going to be 55 times 1,760 divided by 1 1.094 divided by 1,000 divided by 60, which gives you um, 1.5, which is rounded to two sig figs because the number that you were given has got two sig figs. Ça va? Ça va. Bon. Um, so that's all the mathy bits that you should remember. Um, and there is going to be a few practice problems in a little bit that we'll make Alice do. <laughs> what? You didn't tell me that. Um, um, <laughs> uh, no, probably not. Okay. That way I'll be able to tell you that you're wrong without anyone knowing. I'm pretty sure you just tell everybody you're wrong anyway. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that um, is randomly in this chapter is uh, the classification of matter, which we went over a whole bunch with um, Plurk last year. So um, you've got matter. It takes up space. It has volume and mass. Um, something is either heterogeneous or homogeneous. Um, if you have a heterogeneous mixture um, and you want to get it separated into its constituent parts, you can use physical methods because the particles are not chemically combined. Um, physical methods of separation include, for example, filtration, or if you're lucky, it's like iron filings in sand or something, and you can use uh, magnets to get the iron out. And so then you can separate things into homogeneous substances um, in order to get homogeneous mixtures separated into pure substances, um, you can use some other physical methods like distillation, where you boil one thing off, um, or evaporation, where you just stand around and wait for it, um, or chromatography, where you, I think I did show you some chromatography, where you put um, like an ink dot on a piece of paper and put the piece of paper in a solvent and then it all flows up and you can see all the colors separating. So that's separating the different um, pigments in the ink. You can do that with stuff that's not ink, um, but it's typically colored things, hence the word chroma. Um, so that'll get you down to a pure substance. Pure substances are either elements or compounds. If it's a compound and you want to continue to break the thing down into its constituent parts, um, that's getting a compound to turn into, to, to break apart into its elements. That's going to have to be a chemical method. Um, so you're going to have to burn it or react it or something like that in order to get it down into its constituent elements. Um, elements are all of the different flavors of atoms um, that we've got and atoms are composed of their nucleus and their electrons. The nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons, and that is all of the stuff. This concludes the lecturing portion, and then I need to pause it, I think. How do you pause this thing? How about this giant pause button? Where did my mouse go? Mouse, pause. Okay, after much consideration, I have decided that I will actually do these problems while you watch me, which will be thrilling, um, so that you get some idea of uh, whether you're doing them right. But first, I would like you to pause this video and go and do them yourself, and then compare your answers with my answers. Um, that will be good for you. That's what we want. All right, when combining the masses, 0.0562 kilograms, 124.213 grams, and 16... 35 milligrams. Oh, I'm so mean to you. You have to convert them first. Did you notice that? <laughs> the total should be reported to that many significant figures as that many grams. Okay, so first off we have to convert those suckers. So we've got 0 0.05. Stop erasing my decimals. 62. Stop erasing my twos. <laughs> Kilograms. And give me that G back. Um, why are you doing that to me? And that needs to convert to grams. Yeah, we want grams. Um, so to convert that to grams, we need to go from kilograms to grams, which is three decimal places. So we need to go swoop, 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 which is 56.2 grams. So that's that one. And then the milligrams, we need to do 1635 milligrams. 
Give me that back. 1635. You don't love me, Pen. 1635. Five milligrams. Swoop, swoop, swoop. That gives us one point six thirty five milligrams. <laughs> I don't really know how to use this thing, so it's kind of being evil to me, maybe. All right, so we add these all together. We've got one twenty four point two thirteen and fifty six point two and stop it. And 1.635 which gives you not enough space which gives you an 8 and a 4 and a 0 and a 1 up there 2 and a decimal why is that doing that? and an 8 and a one. So my ugly answer is 182.048. Why are you deleting it? <laughs> You're a terrible monster. 182.048 grams. Kind of nervous about this ghost thing here. Um, and because this was addition, we need to consider the decimal places, which of our decimal places we've got, well, we have a partially erased one. <laughs> Come back. We've got three here in the significant figures, one here and three here. We have to use the fewest, which is one. So that means we round to the tenths place, which is going to stay as zero. So that equals 182 point. Stop it. Stop it. Point zero grams, and that's four significant figures. All right, that's one. What is your problem? Do you see it doing that? I do see it doing that. All right. If the volume and mass measurements on a sample of copper at 25 degrees Celsius are that and that, the value for the density should be reported to so many sig figs as so many somethings. All right, we can do grams per mil. All right, the formula is D equals m over v. So density is I don't want you to erase it. I would like you to stop erasing it. D equals to m over v <laughs> which is equal to 32.465 over three point give me that 3.62 <laughs> which equals trusty calculator that doesn't betray me which equals 8.9682 neener 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 give me that six back um <laughs> six eight two um and as far as sig figs, this is a dividing problem, which means that we need to count all of the sig figs. So that's one, two, three there, five here. So we need to round this to three, which is this place. So that needs to round to 8.97. You're gonna let me keep that, huh? Grams per mil. Put a box around your answer. <laughs> And that's three sig figs. Boom. Okay, next one. Aluminum melts at 600 degrees Celsius. Was it its point on the Kelvin scale and the Fahrenheit scale? All right, on the Kelvin scale, what we need to remember is the order in which you do this. So Celsius equals Kelvin plus 273. Um, so that's 660 equals Kelvin plus give me that two seventy three, so that gives me Kelvin on the Kelvin scale. That's three hundred and eighty seven Kelvin. And one thing to mention is that Kelvin doesn't have the little degree bloop. 
Um, on the Fahrenheit scale, we need to do um, Fahrenheit is equal to nine fifths Celsius plus 32. And that's pretty warm. Give me back my 32. And that's going to be 9 fifths times 660 plus 32 equals. Where'd you go, pen? There you are. <laughs> equals 1220 degrees Fahrenheit. Give me that back. Terrible months. I will kill your whole everything. You won't like it. All right, and that's that. And page, nope, page. What is this? Question four. Piece of iron with a volume of that many gallons. Oh, I'm so bad to you. Weighs 95.31 pounds. Calculate the density of iron in grams per mil. Some useful equivalents. Oh, I'm not mean to you at all. I'm nice. All right. So we need to convert our volume and our mass. So let's do our volume 1.452 gallons over 1. What do we need? We need that line to come back. And we also need gallons on the bottom, so it will give me that back. Cancel. This is disconcerting. Stop it. And one. Stop doing that. <laughs> one liter is equal to 0.264 gallons, and we're going to want that in milliliters. So one liter is 1,000 mils. Give me that back too. I'm watching you. Divided by 0.264 times a thousand gives me 5,500 milliliters. And then we've got the weight of it, 95.31 pounds. Probably going to delete some of that too, thank you. Stop it! <laughs> pounds 2.2046 I just remember 2.2 .2. um, is 1 kilogram That's a thousand Give me that What? And we need it in grams. So that's kilograms and grams. There's a th Is it getting worse? Is it am I overdoing the memory on this thing or something? I don't think so. Alright, so that's ninety five point thirty one divided by two point two zero four six times a thousand. That gives me so many grams. That's forty-three two thirty-two. Give me my numbers back. Point three grams. So that's going to be grams per mil is four three two three four three two three two point <laughs> three. Divided by five to five hundred. Give me that back. Equals. That's it. I'm unhappy. <laughs> five fifty five hundred. We're just gonna ignore your shenanigans. You saw it, didn't you? It was there. Seven point eight six zero four. And then how many sig figs did I give you? I gave you. Four 
and four. I'm so nice. So that's one, two, three, four. All right, the computer, erase this one. No? Okay, so no four grams per mil. <laughs> mil! No! Tara is your answer, and I'm done with this crazy machine.